Hi everyone, I'm Steve, here with Coach Krista. And uh, Krista is at uh, Sparks, Fitness for Ken and Sparks Studio. Brian Sanchez at the Carson City Studio, Fitness for Ten, obviously Carson. So today we're going to talk about diets. You know, there's so many different diets out there. So many different ways, so many different things that work for different people. But I'm going to ask each of you, how do you eat? You know, so make it personal. How your diet's changed, maybe. Um, and I know that, you know, Krista's lost a lot of weight. I think Brian's probably gained a lot of weight. Right, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to cover all spectrums. <laughs> yeah. How to go up, how to go down. We've got it for everything. <laughs> All right. So, Krista, why don't you go first? Um, well, I mean, yeah, I think, like, yeah, we can cover everything. I, I used to have a, a seafood diet, right? I see the food. I like the food. I eat the food. <laughs> I think we all have maybe that time in our lives. Um, and, you know, as a fitness professional, I've gone through my journey of losing over 125 pounds, and that's awesome. And that's mostly attributed to diet for sure. Um, for me, there was a lot of habits that had to change within my diet per se. Um, it's a change. It's something as a fitness professional, there's always these things. Oh, this is the best diet. Oh, this is the best diet. Oh, this is the best diet. And my clients will come to me and say, hey, did you hear about keto? And I'm like, yeah, I heard about keto. Oh, did you hear about the carnivore diet? Yes, I've heard about the carnivore diet. I've tried to at least experience each diet per se, just so I have some background in it. Um, for me, honestly, my biggest diet flex is eating my protein. My, my set grams of protein every day in and out, that's my number one go-to when it comes to my nutrition and my diet. I'll tell you guys straight up, there is no day that passes without coffee and without chocolate. Those are my two, like I'm not giving those up. Those are in my diet. But for me, what I found works best is that high protein. Yeah, protein. I mean, for me, protein's always been the key. It was easy when I was a college athlete eating 5,000, 6,000 calories. When you're eating 6,000 calories, you don't need to worry about your protein. You're going to get enough, you know? So, all right, Brian, what's your, uh, what's your special diet that gives you that girlish figure? You know, my diet is not special. I don't think it's unique either. Uh, first off, kind of going back on, you know, what, what Chris is talking about, how, how, you know, she's, she's made the, the adjustments she's made. When I hear what she says, we're talking about behavioral changes. I don't care how anyone eats. If we, if we have gotten over X number of years to a certain size or a certain shape that we dislike, just because we go on a diet does not mean we've changed the, 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 the behaviors or our practices in a fashion that are going to allow us to maintain a leader body, a stronger body, or whatever it is. So first and foremost, diets are individualized or an eating system might even be a better way to describe it. Me personally, I have changed, especially over the last year and a half since Steve and I have really been looking at testosterone programs and things like that. I've had to adjust probably by at least 2,000 calories a day. Now, for me, I look at caloric intake in the sense of how much I'm eating. I don't shy away from any foods. However, I am high protein based on what I like. Before probably noon uh, uh, every day, I'm probably somewhere around by the time lunch hits, from the moment I get up, I generally get up about 3, 4 a.m., depending on if I have a client or if I'm doing my own workout. I'm in the gyms always by 4 to almost 4.30 in the mornings. Before I get to lunch, I've probably ingested somewhere in the neighborhood of 125 to 150 grams of protein. Now, I'm not eating 20 eggs and 5 pounds of meat. 
That's not how I'm doing it. I'm using supplementation to do that through um, bars and shakes. I do eat a lot of eggs, so I eat at least four eggs um, to get that going. And then the rest of the day, after I get that real big protein load, then I start to incorporate carbohydrates. And then I kind of eat a little freely the rest of the day. The biggest change for me over the last year and a half, and I'm going to say around a four inch drop on my waist, I don't think it was necessarily the diet, more so the supplements. And what I'm talking about as age management type of things, and if you've watched over the last year, especially uh, the use of testosterone, the recovery time and periods with the NAD plus, um, I'm treating my body differently and my body recomped. I really don't think it had a lot to do with how I was eating. My body just started shedding inches around like my waist and things of that nature because my te- metabolism went up. So I really didn't do a big study on whether or not my my eating system was really the correct one. As much as I know I've cut probably a good 2,000 calories out a day because I was floating between 3,500 and 45 calories a day when I was doing all the heavy lifting. And so I've really cut that back. Like last night for dinner was uh, salmon with about three, four ounces of rice and vegetables. And to me, that's a good meal. Now, if you're really watching your, your eating and calorically concerned, you may not have wanted the style of vegetables I use with the butter and the, and the uh, seasoning on it and the rice that I chose that was a seasoned rice as well. So for me, it's kind of I eat what I want, except for the first part of the day, I'm packing in the protein so that I can get the changes that I want for my body. And what I really like to say to people when they're looking at how they're eating and, and what it is, is be cautious of diet systems where you walk up, even if it's your coach, and they say, well, here, eat. this is how I eat. Try my program. If it's not individualized for you, yeah, it might work in the beginning. But if you haven't made those behavioral changes, you're going to gain your weight back, period. Uh, so I guess in short, lots of protein, ton of it. My supplementation is in demand. I, I take, I don't even remember half the time how much stuff I'm taking based on my vitamin program, uh, all based on my blood testing uh, and my uh, the rest of my supplements that I take. But I think testosterone is what really did the biggest change for me over the eating system over the last year and a half. Well, and I do that- eat lots of chocolate, Krista. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know if she gets lost, but you probably (laughs) have a little nibble. But, um, you know, that is great insight. It it has to be personalized. And, like, the way I eat, it's always been personalized for me. So nobody can tell you. They can say, let's try it. Let's try carnivore for a month. Let's try vegan for a month or whatever it is, you know. But... Um, you, the, the protein is the key now, and I'll, I'll tell you why, but you, you hit on hormones again. And, you know, I'm always kind of chucking my wife under the bus on these things. Don't tell her, you know, she's not on social media. I get her to do some of these, but she is a lot nicer than you though, Steve. Yeah. And sure. Of course she is. So, uh, anyway, we were talking yesterday morning, we were having some coffee and well, I was, she doesn't drink coffee. She doesn't do anything except this, this is where it's funny. So you got to get your hormones right, especially if you're older, like Brian and I, you know, you got to get your hormones right. So they've been working on her hormones and everything. And she just had her consultation with one of the doctors that they're trying to get all this right and move this up and move that up. And women are a lot harder because the things just move all over the place. Chris is going, yeah, yeah, you think? Mm, Yeah, we're all over. (laughs) But um, so... Um, she's, she's talking to a doctor and said, yeah, they want me to try, um, oxen drink. She's going to oxen alone, oxen alone. I'm going Anavar. <laughs> I go, that's Anavar. What you're trying to say. It's a generic form. I go, babe, 
you're on gear. Yeah. You're going to be on gear for real. <laughs> She's going to be like, yo, Steve, get over here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm explaining to her why they want to do that. Smokes. They want to they want to try to raise her free testosterone and lower her sex hormone binding globule. So that's basically how Anobar works. It's not a big testosterone increaser. It's it helps increase the free testosterone. That's what they're trying to do. I go, very interesting. Okay, okay, I got another short we're gonna do. Cause my wife is pretty thin. And so you know how I do the, the if you've seen some <laughs> of the shorts, how I I ask the kids, what kind of gear are you on? And uh so now when I ask her, this very thin woman who's, I don't know, 58, uh, what kind of gear are you on, Anovar? I was just kidding. <laughs> really? <laughs> so anyway, that's the short. So are you going to have her standing in front of you and you can duck behind her and she can all of a sudden, you can come up and flex as she's saying what she's on? <laughs> she won't be able to block me. She won't be able to block me. You have She's to hide behind cool. her. That way you can flex, and that way we can see all the biceps. You know? Yeah. So anyway, total rabbit trail, you but know, I thought that was funny. I go, you're on gear for real, babe. Yeah. <laughs> She's lived. She's benching two and a quarter next week. Wow, my whole life. Yeah, it's a popular powerlifting drug for sure. You know, I, I find it interesting when we talk about food, especially, you know, I love the perspective Chris brings to this. And, and Kristen, when you talk about such a major transition in your health, do you remember times when it was hard? Did you ever have those days in which you were on your dieting system or eating system, whatever you want to call it, and you felt, did you ever have the days where you just felt like giving up, like it wasn't worth it? And if you did, how do you get through that? Because I have so many people who do need a major change and they just, they hit those plateaus, they get scared and they want to fall back to old ways. What, what did you find as the tool for eating that helped you get through that? If that ever happened. No, absolutely. Of course it did. Of course it did. Like I, I'm a human being just like everybody else. I'm a woman. I'm, you know, we're all over the place. Like we already said, <laughs> like I've got I mean, demands. I, mean, I, I didn't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> No, but it's the truth. It's absolutely the truth. And we can we can measure it out on a scale, you know, throughout the month. Like, it's just the truth of it. And yeah, I mean, it happens. It happens to all of us. And, you know, and I have this conversation with my clients as well. Like, you have to celebrate the small wins every single day. Like, no matter what, even if you quote unquote screwed up or you quote unquote ate the bad food, there's so much conversation and words that we need to change in the vocabulary when we talk about our nutritional plans like you were saying brian like it shouldn't even be called a quote-unquote diet right because it has such a negative connotation but you have to start with what did i do today that made me a little bit better than who i was yesterday and sometimes that's just acknowledging the fact of well crap i didn't make the best decisions today I'm going to try to be just a little bit better tomorrow. And that could be as simple as not going and getting the, you know, coffee that's got 12,000 calories in it. Maybe it's getting the, you know, non-fat milk. That's the best decision for today. Then celebrate it. Win that. And I think so often we get stuck in what I call that Monday mentality when it comes to our fitness, our nutrition, like, on Monday, I'm doing this. On Monday, I'm doing this. Like, right? And what happens too is Sunday night, we're cleaning out the pantry and we're like, found the old box of Girl Scout cookies. I better eat those because I don't want to throw them away. <laughs> and yeah. we do it that way. It's just, it becomes such yeah. an extreme. You said old box of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hide mine, okay? <laughs> hey, there's never been an old box of cookies in my house. <laughs> Ever. I, have kids, new. I have to hide them. <laughs> That's the key. You got to keep the new ones out of Brian's house. So, yes. <laughs> Here's the never had an old one. You both touched on this a bit. For me, eating probably about 2,000, 2,200 calories a day. Now, it's a lot because of the way I eat. So, two things. If you're only eating that many calories a day, you have to focus on your protein. If you don't keep your eye on the protein to get, because I want 150 grams of protein every day. 
-hmm. or more. If you don't focus on the protein at that low calorie amount, you're not going to get close to 150. You know, in the beginning of the, the tape we turned on, you know, it, if you're eating 5,000, 6,000 calories, which I was in college, you don't need to count protein. You're going to get right. 350 grams of protein without trying. Right. But at 2,000 calories or even 2,500 calories, you're not going to get even 150 grams of protein unless you pay attention to your protein. So my two rules is, and I chart everything I eat, but my, I go by pretty, two pretty simple rules. Get my protein up to that number and eat clean. No seed oils, no processed foods, and uh, that's um, eating clean. Now, when you do that, you know, and, and my carbs are almost always under 100 grams. And that just kind of happens naturally when I'm focusing on the protein to get the protein up. Um, but th those are those are two things for me, and so I would agree with you. I mean, you both touched on the protein. I think yeah, you're right on that quality too. Now, do yeah. you guys find because we're saying protein? Do you guys find that with protein, and then everybody listens because your bodies are all going to respond differently? I find that I have to have tremendous amounts of fiber in my diet because I eat so much protein. And I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that, but that's what happens to me. If you change your protein levels and you do bring it up, you know, be cognizant of that. You're going to have to make sure you're really on top of your hydration so that the body's processing this properly and you're not stopping up your body because it's got to get rid of the bad stuff every day. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys do that. Uh, you know, that. my body can do with or without fiber. That's just yeah. me, but I take this. And that is like, it's an amino acid, but it's fiber on steroids, you know, right. talking about that stuff, but <clears throat> everyone's different, you know, so I, I'm coming in it in a day because that's another thing. If, if you're focusing on protein and you're at 2000 calories, it's, it's like you can't focus on everything. So to get say 170 grams of protein, say you eat 2000 calories, 170 grams of protein and 35 grams of fiber. Try that. Cause that's even harder to get in within 2000 calories to get 170 grams of protein and 35 grams of fiber. That's not easy. You can do it. There's certain things that have really high fiber, but it's a you lot gotta really pay attention then. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of food. Yeah, I know I eat a ton of food. And, and so I can only imagine when somebody's looking at how many grams of protein they want to ingest, if they really truly saw without using supplements, if they really saw how many grams, 150 grams of protein is. I'm just taking your, your average size person, not somebody that's bigger. But if you really look at how much that takes to eat, that is crazy hard to do. I mean, crazy hard. Absolutely. Yeah, like me, it's not an issue. I eat all day. Yeah. Well, I space it you, out, but... you use, I use this example all the time. If you ate eight eggs, eight, and a half a pound of lean ground beef, which is pretty high in protein, you're at 90 grams of protein. That's it. Can Krista, do you eat eight eggs and a half a pound of ground beef every day? That's a lot. That makes food. my stomach hurt just thinking about it, to be perfectly that honest. Would like, like, that would only put me hungry. Now, I, I do this protein shake where I put a couple eggs in it. And it's, it there's a video on it where I'm making it in the kitchen. Uh, so you can go back and find that video. Um, I hear the Rocky yeah, theme song. Seven, yeah, <laughs> 70, so it's 73 grams of protein and only 550 calories. Wow. <clears throat> Yeah. Dang. And I make but it I with think... a, well, I make it with a company that um, you can get whatever kind of protein you want. If you like vegan protein, uh, whey protein, um, <clears throat> beef isolate, um, they have egg white protein, they have all the proteins and you can mix them. So it's really cool. You can get a mixture of, okay, I want half egg white and half grass fed 
whey isol or a whey isolate or grass fed beef isolate 50 50. And then you can spike it with amino acids, collagen, all kinds of stuff. So it's really cool. Um, and then I throw a couple eggs in there just like Rocky. And uh, the, so, you know, we have our own chickens. So I know that these are really healthy chickens. And so the eggs are really good. Now, do you and chase your I, chickens like Rocky? <laughs> my wife does. Okay. Okay. <laughs> my wife does. That, that's, that's why she's so skinny, I think. You, yeah. She does every day. But that's, you know, 550 calories and 73 grams of protein. I'm well on my way if that's my first meal. Right. Yeah. But then, you know, fiber, you know, you got to eat some things like, you know, avocados are loaded with fiber, but they're loaded with calories too. And, you know, does the fiber really count as a calorie? I mean, yes and no, you know, but an avocado is what, 320 calories you can eat an avocado easy and it's got i don't know a, a lot of fiber 12 grams or some crazy amount of fiber in one avocado i'm not sure exactly but well and i think it's important too you know when you're looking at the eating systems people get frustrated when they're losing weight and they're not losing it fast enough and they have an expectation that they should you hear these stories of well you should be able to lose three to five pounds every couple of weeks that's not necessarily the case if you lose one to two pounds a month, you should be happy because over a year's time, you've probably made such a great behavioral change behind the scenes and you've progressed. If you did this for a year, you're down 25 to 30 pounds. Well, that's bad math on my part, but you guys know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can just pay attention to all these little things. And, yeah. and you, you know, for anybody listening, if, if, if you're too embarrassed to ask your coaches or your trainers, let us know. Shoot us messages and we can help you find what you need. It's, it's, it's something we would be lovingly uh, or love to assist you with in your journeys. Yeah, yeah um, for sure. Very lovingly. <laughs> But it is, it's a journey and it's a process. And, you know, we talked about that last week as well, like weight loss and fat loss. Those are two different things, right? Like, and we have to be able to monitor yeah. that through our nutrition. So yeah, like Brian just said, you may lose one or two pounds, but what is that recomposition looking like? Because we want that muscle mass 110% all day, every day. And it is such a behavioral process. Like I tell all of my clients, like, if I know that I drink too much alcohol, I might not bring alcohol into my house. I may not go to places where there's alcohol served. But with food, I have to consume food. So I have to deal with the relationship that I have with my food and my nutrition. And I use my supplements the way they're meant to be. Like we were talking about, they are supplements to whole foods. You know, the, the nutrients that you're getting from your food is important. For me, I drink my protein coffee every morning. I mix my protein into my coffee. So now I get my coffee and I'm a happy person. <laughs> and y'all can tolerate me, but I get my, I, I can't do a big 700 calorie, you know, protein shake and not, you know, my stomach would kill me if I did that. It would hurt. But that's, again, nutrition is so individual. It's so personalized and you have to, you know, like Brian said, work with your coach, have that conversation. Like, this is what I'm coming up against. I don't eat breakfast. I'm not a breakfast person. Okay. So what can we do for lunch to prioritize protein, to prioritize your goals? It has to be looked at at that individual level. Yeah. And you know, the last thing I'd say on this is what you just said reminded me of this, uh, Krista, is an easy way to get protein, bone broth. You just yeah. drink it like soup or tea or coffee, and it is loaded. And then, that, then I would come in with my essential amino acids and chase it with that. But you're getting, you know, a couple cups of that. You're easily at 25, 30 grams of protein mm -hmm. and, you know, and not many calories, you know. So that, that's a good way to get it. So any last thoughts from either one of you? Just stay healthy, everybody. Find a way to get there. Yeah, find what works for you. All right. So, uh, Coach Krista, you're on Instagram, right? It's Coach Krista. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Instagram and TikTok, right? 
TikTok, sort of. Mostly Instagram. Yeah. Okay. And Brian is uh, on Facebook. Brian's right? here with us. <laughs> hey, don't go looking for me on, on you know all those little uh, little places. I, I I don't exist there. You can find Brian all over on videos here. Vitality and Wellness YouTube. <laughs> He's on it. I don't know, fifty times at least. So, both of you, thanks for being with us, and uh, we will talk to you next time. See you, everybody. All right. See you later.